news. United States calls for diplomatic boycott of Beijing Olympics, citing Uyghur genocide. On December 6th, Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, announced that the United States government had imposed a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing 2022 Olympics. As a result, the Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2020 Winter Olympics and, or the Paralympic Games. Saki cited China's ongoing genocide against its Uyghur ethnic minority population and other crimes against humanity, adding that, quote, the United States diplomatic or official representation would treat these games as business as usual in the face of the People's Republic of China's or PRC's egregious human rights abuses and atrocities in Xinjiang. Not sending official representation could, quote, send a clear message, she stated. Uh, Liu Pengyu, the spokesperson for Beijing's embassy in Washington, D.C., called the boycott, quote, a pretentious act in a political manipulation. Although no diplomatic or official representation will be sent, United States athletes can still travel and compete in the Winter Olympics. After the announcement from the United States, Australia, the United Kingdom, Canada, Lithuania, and Kosovo have also joined the diplomatic boycott, again, citing human rights concerns. So, you know the obvious reaction to this, right? What, like Chinese diplomats acting like babies? So. No, no. Okay. Well, you, it, it, let me, before I, am I paused or is it Armin? Let me check the stream. Oh no, it's him. Shoot. Oh no, maybe his internet went out. Okay, well, I'll just continue talking about this until hopefully he comes back. Or, uh, <laughs> music guy is saying, oh shoot. Oh, his internet definitely went out if it just took his screen away. God damn it. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'm going to pull this up, um, the article up on my computer. Um, sorry for the uh, break. <laughs> Armin really went bye-bye. Santa froze Armin. Um, Do-do-do-do-do. Okay. Um, until Armin comes back, you guys are going to have to give me, um, a little, oh, God damn it. A little bit of patience as I have to manage the screen sharing and all this stuff, uh, by myself. We got to multitask over here, friends. Okay. There we go. One moment. Okay. So. Um, I thought that this was very interesting and something worth talking about, um, because, you know, a lot of people talk about the, um, Olympics that happened under, um, Yahtzee Germany. And when I'm saying Yahtzee, I mean the, uh, bad people from world. Hey, he's back. Yes. <laughs> you should have seen my reaction. I was like, like gaslighting myself. I'm like, is this, is it just me or is this really happening? <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? You were saying about the expected reaction and. No, I was going to say about like people talking about uh, United States own human rights violations. Ah, uh, what about uh, ism? Oh, shut the front door. He's frozen again. Okay, I'm just going to bring my screen back and I'm going to talk. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to uh, uh, take a gander at or take a guess of what I reckon Armin was about to say. 
So I'm guessing that he was going to bring up how in the face of the United States doing a diplomatic boycott over China because of um, uh, genocide, people might feel like they would want to bring up how the United States participated in, um, or the construction of the United States, uh, you know, came at the cost of genocide of its native people, or uh, maybe other atrocities in foreign nations or foreign wars. And, you know, I don't know what he was going to say, but I think if someone gives that criticism, it's very important to point out that this is a genocide that's happening right now. Right. And also when they try to bring up the genocide of the Native Americans, like there was no a, like International Olympics at that point. I don't know what people are talking about. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My connection is I'm going to probably keep, get kicked out again at some point. Yeah. So I'm so just going to keep my screen up. But um, I was yeah. basically trying i was attempting to make your point for you saying if people try to bring up genocides that america has done they're basically just participating in whataboutism and we're trying this is an effort to address something that's happening today yeah is that what you were gonna say well no but that's actually a good point that's oh cool point. that's that's actually a better point than i would what i was gonna make so that there's, there's that um no but i was also gonna mention that even yeah let's uh, even if it's true this is still a good thing right yeah like we we promote um holding china responsible for their human rights violations and if there's another event that is trying to hold united states responsible for its human rights violations we'll support that as well <laughs> right like if i don't know if some, some other countries do something like boycott united states for their involvement in yemen for example We're like yeah you go do that fantastic you know so mm. who you know so whatever whatever as long as countries are facing consequences for their human rights violations we will support the act e even even if it's being done by people who we don't support however i do have to mention that when it comes to united states united states just like china's government is not one entity right uh and cu the current administration um is not responsible for the crimes that united states government has done uh, committed before not all of them like biden is responsible for like um, iraq and some other things but if you want to judge the current administration not just by biden but the entirety of the biden's administration it is so far looking like they are doing a better relatively better job in caring about human rights not i mean i I know there are many examples that will say otherwise, right? It's far from perfect. Far from perfect. We actually covered some of the, the drone strike, for example, in Kabul that was horrendous. Mm -hmm. have, we'll ta have we're talking about drone strikes. Um, they have been reduced significantly by, under Biden. Like they are extremely less. Like if you look, at, I, I was trying to bring up the graphs to show you um because it just looks like it shows like bush obama and then trump it goes higher and then biden's it just goes like it's invisible like they like they have silently re been removing strikes airstrikes right um which is amazing like that's something that they should be congratulated for a lot of the like they pulled out of afghanistan people said they won't and they did the yemen situation they behind the scenes they have actually pushed they have made a lot of um they have moved forward a lot faster than a lot of people anticipated in not supporting saudi arabia in the war in yemen like not as fast as we would like them yeah but fast but much faster than a lot of people like the pressure is there again it's not perfect at all it's like it's actually still very horrible but relative to almost every president the the last four presidents before him biden is seems to make care about human rights more than again when i say relative this the bar is very low but still it's it's still progress and things can change um fast and biden could do something that would come and say like okay that no um things have moved backwards now but so far by the biden administration is one of the best 
political entities, units out there that could be used as holding governments like China responsible for the like they do have the moral standing relative to other um, many other institutions, like maybe not Europe, Europe would be better, but they don't have the p political power uh, or the yeah. willingness. I mean, France has been like, after, for example, also like United States led the way on this and a lot of countries followed. I, I was gonna. You know I just that. wanted to talk about that. Actually, I think it's quite significant. Yeah. Like yeah, people so want to act like these kinds of things have no meaning. First of all, China is extremely butthurt over this. Like they're like they. Some of their politicians or spokespeople were literally like, "Well, you weren't invited, anyways." It's like actually, yeah, that's how the Olympics works. Num nuts. So um, butthurt. <laughs> They're so, so like, butthurt. Like, I saw this GIF earlier today, and it's like the laughing face. It's a laughing, crying, except it has an angry expression, and it's just repeatedly rotating. And I was like, oh, my God, that's like a Chinese spokesperson. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> No, like, they're seriously, like, they're like children. This is CCP. I'm not talking about China. I'm talking about the yeah, CCP. Yeah, yeah. Don't come at me with accusations of racism, okay? I'm specifically talking about CCP, okay? Government officials. They are like, they are, you know, I can't, like, I was like, I used to think like, you know, m many Muslims seem to be extremely sensitive and butthurt, okay? Like, I thought it can't get worse than this. And then I met Trump supporters. I'm like, okay, never mind. It can't get worse than this. Like the level of sensitivity when it comes to criticism. And then I met like many Hindutva. I was like, okay, never, no. Sorry, sorry, Oma community. Sorry, Trump supporters. You're not as sensitive as like Hindutva. Okay, this is it. This is the highest level of, you know, uh, the trigger alerts. Every trigger alert everywhere in the world just exploded once they once the Hindutva noticed that their gods could be drawn in in sexy ways, right? But then now I'm like looking at the CCP and I'm like, okay. Even Hindutva doesn't have anything over the CCP. Like they actually, they are, they will crash their own economy if they have to, just to get back at Australia. Do you know what I mean? Like okay. Australia, like, oh, we need to investigate where this like disease comes from. Like we need to investigate more. Uh, like we, we need your call, but like we're going to, and we're like having an energy shortage. But we're just gonna stop buying coal from Australia, and their city, like lights, are literally going out in their streets because they don't have enough coal. But they're so butthurt, like they are, like and like people don't understand. We're talking about billions of dollars of economic damage just because they're butthurt over what Australia said, right? Uh, what do they call this? Call this wolf wolf warrior diplomacy, like something yes, like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And now over the like. They like they're telling the world, so the United States said like we're not gonna go, and Germany and some other countries were like okay we're not gonna go either because of United States. So good job in United States leading the way when it comes to making human rights an issue. Again, I'm not saying every United States does everything right, but when they do something right, we have to congratulate that. We have to see that you can't just do a stick. You have to do the carrot as well when it comes to the politicians, right? You can't just be like always like bad politician, bad politician. You also have to be like, oh, good politician, good job, politician. You did a good thing. Here's the carrot. Okay, here's the treat. Um, right? So you have to recognize that. But now the CCP is responding with like, we weren't gonna invite you anyways. Like, are you do you think we're idiots? Do you think the entire world is like stupid? You were like you you were not gonna invite the pol like it's the Olympics. When have you not in like when have you not had the politicians from other countries? Like of course you were gonna invite them. Like what? Like we were gonna, like it's like we we weren't gonna invite you anyways. Like are you are you serious? Like this is like a ten year old. This is like a, like a little girl at the party that like this like that the people don't show up for her for her birthday and she was like, well, I wasn't gonna invite them anyway. Like 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 not being invited to the cool kid table. This is like so so pathetically childish. Like are who would believe you? But go on. Yeah, sorry. I think um it's really. It's really important to talk about how 
if anyone who thinks that they also accuse the U.S. of, yeah, politicizing sports, the Olympics is exactly that. That is the construction of the Olympics. And anyone who tries to pretend otherwise is deluded. Yes, it is the preeminent platform to see spectacular sportsmanship and athleticism. Of course. And it's awesome. It's freaking awesome. But it is also how countries demonstrate their national pride and prowess on the global stage. It always has been. Why? Like, so especially for the host cities and the host countries. Um, and so acting like this hasn't always been about politics is just ridiculous and um, so out of touch and ahistoric. Um, and I think it's also interesting to see how the United States really led the way on this. And as of like, it was a few days ago that, um, like last week, it, all these other countries joined the diplomatic boycott. I think might maybe even more have joined since then, like Australia, the UK, Canada, Lithuania, and Kosovo. And so people who act like this has no, um, this is like just symbolic. This doesn't do anything. Well, then why did as soon as the United States did, all these other countries followed? This has a you know, huge effect. It has a if huge it... impact, and it's sending oh the God. message to China okay. that we're not going to stand by and give this our seal of approval by sending our representation there because people, con these countries, don't want to face the criticism that the countries that participated in the olympics that happened under yahtzee germany they don't they like how could you support this regime you're implicitly endorsing and approving of this regime by attending and participating in this they're trying to put that at arm's length in this case while still allowing the athletes who have dedicated their lives to honing these extremely specific skills and this mastery of their sport, still allowing them that opportunity, but trying to put the distance and saying, our government is not going to participate and endorse this in any way, shape or form. Because if these accusations of genocide are in any way true, that's a black stain on us. We can't deal with that in the 21st century. If it didn't matter, China wouldn't be spending billions and billions of dollars to whitewash its image globally. Like this is like insane for people who say this; these kind of things don't matter. Like your 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 international uh, political capital depends on the average view people, citizens of each country have of your country. You know what I mean? Especially in more democratic countries, the way the way that you get to throw your weight around. Uh, into other countries' politics will not be completely dependent on, but somewhat correlated to how positively or negatively the average citizen views you, your government, right? So it ha that's why, and that's the reason why these countries like Saudi Arabia um, or China's government or even the Islamic Republic of Iran, but that's why they spend the money to go and trying to run the world, trying to white whitewash their image, right? Um, there are a few comments by Gaijin American that I wanted to highlight. Um, yeah, I also started a couple of other ones as well. If you want so to highlight those, Gaijin American. Also, Gaijin American, can you please um, translate for me what does Wu Mao mean? Because I know that the like um, basically CCP equivalent of an IT cell, they're called Wu Mao, and they are the most fragile, butt hurt little babies I've ever seen. But that actually means something. I'm trying to remember what it means. So if you could help me out with that, that'd be super helpful. But um, Gaijin America is saying two genocidal countries holding each other accountable until no more genocides are left. Okay, no, this is unfair, okay? A currently genocidal country versus a formal genocidal country. Right? Unite, you know. So United States right now only supports other countries' genocides. United States doesn't it doesn't do its own genocide. Okay, there is a difference, so and we do we have massive problems with that support. Like, let's be clear, yes. we're not trying to minimize or diminish that. Yes, we're talking about Yemen for, specifically, right? Yes. So, and also, Biden's administration has been heavily heavily trying to reduce that support. Okay, so that's a good thing, but you can't look at these countries as if these countries today are the same as they were before. Okay. So there's that. 
um, Gay Asian American is also saying, talking about why they're so fragile, saying, I think it's because the CCP are not used to trolls due to government censorship. You know, that's actually a very interesting comment. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case. Like, they're just not used to getting it, like, super hard. Whereas in America, like, well, I mean, it, actually, it's it's kind of, it's really messed up, the stuff that our politicians have to deal with. Not like dealing with criticism is a bad thing, but I mean, like, we're at the point in our political discourse where it's, like, frequent death threats. Like, that's not okay. Um, but yeah, that just complete fragility towards any anything negative is... It's very exaggerated and extreme um, when you start looking at how they react to things. Oh, and then in response to Armin talking about the power outages and crashing your own economy to save face, um, he's saying the CCP is trying to spin the darkening cities as their commitment to carbon neutrality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh, my. I don't know how seriously to take. I mean, I don't think it's like a binary, okay? A, a lot of times, like. China is going to run out of energy and they were like, well, we're just trying to switch away from carbon. But they are also making they're also are actually investing into green energy. And that should again, that should be celebrated. You know, that should well, also be celebrated. They did, well, I mean, at the what was it? The what's that I'm hope, called? Guys, they, when, um, overall, they have no interest in terms of like participating to the fullest extent that they should be in terms of lowering emissions. Like, let's be clear. Well, I mean, they do want to be leading. I mean, they do want to be a major investor in green technology. I mean, it does have political capital for them and economical interest for them if they are involved in that. It's not binary. It's not like they do exaggerate how committed they are to it. They're not as committed to it as they say they are. But it's not like they're not interested. Like, and it, so it's not one hundred, but it's also not zero. It's not like they're not interested in green technology and going off carbon at all. It's not zero as well, right? So they do exaggerate their commitment, but they are they are actually somewhat interested. Uh, and I again, guys, I do wish I genuinely <laughs> wish them well. Like, it's not like we're against the CCP. We do want China to prosper. Okay, a bigger Chinese economy is good, not just for the Chinese people. It's good for the goddamn planet we just hope that china manages to do that maybe one day without the ccp but china growing and becoming more powerful it's not a it's not a bad thing we just wish ccp wasn't involved um okay next um and aga is saying i worry that the athletes of these countries will suffer while in china no it's not about i okay it's oh while in china okay so i, I thought you were saying something that I, you're not some people are saying like, but the athletes want to go and they want to participate. Like some people are assuming that the United States is not sending the athletes, but they are sending the athletes, right? Um, so AJ is saying, I wonder if they would be suffer. You know, I yeah, you, you're right. That is a concern because I would think like, no, a government wouldn't be childish and stupid enough to punish them. like that would be such a bad PR for them that they mistreat the athletes because of their politician. But then I remembered it's actually CCP. So <laughs> they get butt hurt and they do stupid things. Well, it'd be oh, interesting if, okay, if it's just the athletes attending and just like not saying anything, I would be shocked if something happened to them simply because of their nationality. But if mm -hmm. they're doing interviews while in Beijing and being very vocal about specific human rights abuses, that could get dicey. Like they should in theory be protected by the fact that they're not a citizen and that they're there in under international auspices. Right. But mm -hmm. like I saw some um, people who cover China issues, like openly encouraging athletes to talk about these issues while being interviewed for the Olympics. I was like, that's an extremely risky thing to be telling people to do. Like, I feel like you have no right to, <laughs> to be encouraging people to be taking that risk. Um, and Asian American is saying Wu Mao means 50 cents. Oh, that's right. Because the, the Wu Mao are the 50 cent army, like, cause they're paid for um, just dogging people who criticize China online. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you for um, reminding me. And, he also clarified that when he was referring to two genocidal regime, two genocidal countries, um, uh, 
uh, holding each other accountable until there's no more genocide left. He's saying, I'm referring to blood quantum and mass incarceration in private prisons in America. I will concede that it's far more piecemeal than the targeted approach of the CCP. No, you are yes. giving examples of 1980. Yeah, you, look, look at this one. The U.S. lost its mind when Black Panther Party members protested the Star Spangled Banner in 1968. What does this got to do with Biden's administration? Like, well, I mean, that so, did happen. Yeah, it but did that happen. Was, but I mean, it, that's also partially because the, the Olympic policies itself, it's not just the United States. The Olympic policies itself prohibit that, those kinds of displays. Although that event has a very interesting history, which informs a lot of sports politics today. So that's it's interesting okay. to think about. Liberal Bengali Hindu, that's a very interesting point, but we're not going to highlight it for obvious reasons. <laughs> okay. Wait, now I have to like see it. what this is. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.